What is up YouTube? Balls and Ball Cards back with another video. I'm going to sit here and just kind of discuss some things for a little bit. Uh, if you're new here, I do content for sports cards. have been for a few years now. I uh, don't do as much regularly as I used to. Also, to clarify, I am a bulk submitter for SGC. Uh, also get things authenticated with JSA. I am an authorized dealer with CSG, etc. But that's not what any of this is going to be about. Um, I don't do many videos anymore, but uh, JD over at JD Sports Cards has done a, I think he put it as a challenge, I think is what he said. But anyway, yeah, he his video says my sports card journey challenge. So um, he put it as a challenge, and I, I had messaged and told him, give me some time, and uh, I will record something. Uh, the reason that I don't do a lot of videos now is simply that keyword, time. Um, and maybe I can get back into where I just sit for, you know, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, something like that, just talking about things, showing cards, whatever. Uh, I do miss doing regular content, but I also have another channel that I've been trying to squeeze content in and amongst many, many, many other things. So uh, there's not enough minutes on the clock to uh, get everything done all the time. But since he tagged me in this and mentioned me as someone to do this, I figured it was only right to honor his challenge and uh, discuss it. And the topic is basically how or why and how on sports card collecting. Um, and do you do anything differently if you're a multi-sport collector? He also mentions a good point in there where we as humans over time, we evolve. Uh, what we like today, six months from now, might be something different. And that is never more true than in collecting. There, I don't think there's any of us that, and I'm not going to say there's nobody out there, but I don't think the majority of us can sit and say that the way we collected or what we collected since we were a kid, we do the same exact thing today. Because I think somewhere down the road, something has changed, um, whether it be something in our life, um, whether it be the players we like, the team we like, uh, the sports we like. I think somewhere down the, our paths and journeys, uh, financial things change. So there's many different aspects of why or, you know, reasons of, of why people would change. So I'm going to start out um, on the, the first question of why I collect. Uh, it all goes back to my childhood. Uh, about 1986, I would have been six years old. Uh, growing up for the majority length of my childhood, I did not have a sibling. Uh, my brother was born in 1989. I was born in 1980. Um, and I, you know, this isn't to be a sad sob story, but I didn't have a close relationship. Uh, my father, my biological father, had never been in my life. And me and my stepdad never got along, um, which drew some of the relationship away from me and my mom. And so most of my childhood was either spent just chilling in my bedroom or uh, outside playing, you know, backyard baseball or football or whatever with friends from the neighborhood um, or at my grandparents' house. Um, but when you're sitting, you know, back then, <laughs> way, way long ago, uh, we didn't have like all of the video games and stuff. In fact, the first video game I ever owned was a Game Boy. And, uh, you know, up until then, I didn't didn't have that. I just had, you know, your simple toys. My favorite was probably Lego. Um, but cards were something that I loved playing sports. Uh, even if I didn't get to watch games, I would always check the newspaper. That's the thing that people did back in the day to uh, check box scores and that sort of stuff. And my grandparents would buy me 
for birthdays and Christmas, they would buy me cards. And back then, it was really popular to be able to look at the back of the cards and see player statistics. And there would be little stories or maybe a little comic drawing or something like that on the player. Um, and that's where it all began. And that was just one of my favorite things to do. It also helped me uh, when I went to school make friends because I had a you know I had some some other you know kids in school they collected cards and stuff and we would trade with each other and buy and sell and everything else so it was kind of uh, an escape an outlet it was just something that that I really enjoyed as a child fast forward to my adulthood uh, at 19 years old I moved halfway across the country to Indiana from Virginia once again um, didn't have, you know, you, you displace yourself, you know, 650 plus miles. Uh, you don't just fall into where you know people. I did not really know anybody out there and, uh, you know, started talking to coworkers and I made a buddy out there when I worked at Cummins named Dan and he was huge into cards and he sold on eBay and, you know, all of this. And this was in 2003. So eBay was still relatively new, um, but me and him back then would like buy cases or boxes from Blowout, and we would order them, you know, split the cost, open them up, and he would toss them on his eBay store. He had a huge eBay store, and, uh, you know, it was a different time back then, but it was another, you know, it, it connected me with friends, and uh then I found a card shop that was in the town I lived in, Columbus, Indiana. Um, it was called Cardboard Connection. I don't believe they exist any longer, but it was two brothers uh, that were around my age at the time running this card shop. I'd go in there and talk to them, um, and I would buy cards all the time, whether it was packs, singles, whatever. And then, you know, once my son got old enough, he would come to the shop with me, but his thing wasn't sports cards. Uh, he would get up on the bar stool and sit there and uh, go through the uh, the boxes of common Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And the guy, uh, I think the guy's name was Kevin, um, would, you know, let my son pick out a big stack of the, the cheap um, uh, commons from Yu-Gi-Oh. And so my son would always go in there and hang out and stuff and, and pick out Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff. And, you know... I started this YouTube channel uh, when I when I moved. Uh, let me rephrase, rewind a little bit. When I moved back to Virginia, uh, that was in 2012. Uh, once I got settled back in over here in 2015, I still remember um, my wife took the kids up to the Chantilly area uh, to a, a dentist appointment, and I asked her if she could swing by Blowout because that's where Blowout is located. And I, I'll never forget it. She called me and she's like, this is a warehouse. And I knew they had a store, but it's not called Blowout. It's called the Fantastic Store. So I had to get the address to that. She went over there and I still remember she bought me uh, two boxes of 2015 Bowman football. Um, was hunting for Kevin White. Uh, I hit a really nice Amari Cooper. Uh, but anyway, that kind of got me started back in. Now, through all of this journey, something I need to mention is I lost the collections I had built, not once, but twice. Um, when my childhood collection, when I moved to Indiana, that got tossed out. And then when I left Indiana, uh, unfortunately, I was in a bad relationship. And uh, so everything that I had accumulated I lost at that period too. Um, so I am now on my third iteration of sports car collecting. I actually get jealous of some of the folks that can share stories and share cards that they had from their childhood. You know, I wish I had a lot of mine. I wish I had my collection from when I was a kid. Unfortunately, I don't, but I am very proud and happy with the collection that I have built on my third go around, but also, you know, as, as JD mentioned, as things changed, doing it twice already kind of allowed me to know and, and have like, it, it's like you get to erase the board and start over again, in a sense, it sucks. You lose everything, 
but you get to kind of do things differently and maybe do it how you had wished you had done it before. So in 2017, uh, me and my wife decided that I, I hated baseball for the longest time. That was my sport when I was a kid. I hated base, uh, baseball when the steroid era came about. But in 2017, after watching the Chicago Cubs win the World Series, kind of brought us back into that excitement for baseball. So we started to become national fans, as you see. And I started building a nationals collection in 2017. And um, that was just a very, it was one of the most fun things that I've done actually in collecting was, was hunting the starting lineup of, uh, you know, the, the batting order. And then I got like the pitchers and stuff um, in their first Bowman's, you know, if they had those, if they didn't have first Bowman, I would try to get like their Bowman rookie or, um, you know, the best equivalent I could find. And, um, and that was I, back then BGS was the thing that everybody used. And so I did them all in BGS nine or above. And I had this idea that I wanted to map them out and, you know, get a stadium or whatever little display and put them all in their position. Unfortunately, I also learned that's very tough to do because players change so often now in sports. Growing up, it happened here or there, but I still remember, you know, Jerry Rice for the longest time was a 49er until he went to the Raiders and the Seahawks. Um, you know, Shaq broke my heart because he left Orlando really quick and went to L.A. Um, and then in baseball, my favorite player was Ken Griffey Jr. And again, he eventually left and went to, Can uh, to Cincinnati. That taught me at an early age that getting attached to a player can be heartbreaking because it's hard to root for a team when your favorite player leaves. Uh, we're seeing the same thing as Nationals fans. We had this rise with, you know, the, the World Series in 2019. Then, unfortunately, COVID hit. And then, since then, the team has just been torn apart. So as a Nationals fan, it's hard to, to stay uh, excited about it. What that has also taught me in sports cards is stick to more the cards or the players that you really enjoy. Don't necessarily, it's okay to build a team, but remember that there's going to be periods in there where there might not be anybody on your team that you really enjoy. Um, the team may not be good. And, and, you know, if you're blessed to be like a Yankee fan or a Dodger fan, there's always like they're always good. Right. They always have some good players. But there's also teams out there that there's times you don't really have anything to be excited about. Um, I used to love football cards. I mentioned 2015. I asked her to buy me football. Uh, I don't like I, I buy very little football cards today. And if I do. It's going to be just players I enjoy um, or, you know, some Ravens cards here or there. Mostly the, the players from the last Super Bowl, uh, the 2012 Super Bowl. Uh, basketball, again, I used to go out, play basketball almost every day. I loved basketball, the 90s basketball. I was not a Jordan fan, but I loved watching the man play because you knew at any moment, even if the Bulls were down, he was going to do something to bring them back. And it was just... Being able to grow up as a teenager and watch that man play basketball. Um, and then you had, you know, other greats mixed in there with, you know, obviously I mentioned Shaq, but you had Akeem, you had Patrick Ewing, Barkley, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Like you had so many good players. And then Kobe came in in 96 and like uh, Allen Iverson. And, and you know, it, it was just a, a great period in the 90s there. Today, I don't really... Nothing against anybody that's a basketball fan. I just don't like the game. I don't like the throw three-pointers up constantly and no defense. Uh, it's just not something I enjoy. Football, same thing. I don't like, even though I love wide receivers, I played wide receiver. I love guys making awesome catches. Um, 
throwing the ball every down is just not my thing. I love that style of football where it was balanced, where, you know, you had Barry Sanders that could dominate on the ground or Emmett Smith. And, you know, you had this balance, the, the run game opened up the pass game, the pass game opened up the run game. And it was like, you know, there was strategy there. There was, it just felt more competitive today. It feels like just throw it up, you know, on both, on both of the, both of those sports, throw up the three, throw the deep pass, um, just throw it up. You know, the guys, hell, they hardly even wear pads anymore. Um, because you can't really touch people like you can't touch the, the players or you're going to get uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or something like that. So um, I don't know. I just I don't care for the sports as much. And that does then withdraw the interest of collecting the cards from those sports uh, during the pandemic. If you've been following the, the channel, I had some awesome basketball cards and I decided it just. I wasn't excited about it anymore and I moved them and put the, that money into to cards I, I was excited to own. Uh, same thing with football. I have a few vintage football cards that I have held on to. Um, but outside of that, the only football I really collect is going to be, you know, players from the 90s. And, you know, like I said, maybe some Ravens players here or there. Um, so. That also brings into hockey. I am new to hockey and being a fan of hockey. And you guys have seen, I picked Jason Robertson. That's the dude I love to collect. I, I'm a Dallas Stars fan now through and through. And Jason Robertson, I've been, you know, collecting his stuff. That's kind of what I, I've always found myself grasping to. Um, having a favorite. I was a Mariners fan because of Griffey. Uh, they were all the way across the country. I didn't really get to watch the games. But again, like I said, you could check the newspaper for the box scores and see how the team was doing, see how the stats were. Um, I've always been more of just a player, and then that player draws me to the team, and then rooting for the team. And then normally I get my heart broken, and the player moves on somewhere else, and you know that's that. But, um, you know, that that's one thing I've always enjoyed uh, as far as collecting cards. Um, going back to the YouTube channel, when I started this, uh, I didn't expect anything to ever get anywhere. And I, let's be real, I don't have a large channel. I don't get you know thousands of views. Hell, I'm lucky to get a hundred, right? But outside of all of that, I have made some friends in this hobby that. I wouldn't trade for the world, you know, uh, with, I, I could care less like how many views I get anymore. That's one reason why I don't put a lot of emphasis into the channel. Um, I realized that this channel brought me some friendships and if I don't get another thing out of it, then it still was 100% worth it. Um, I will jump on and do a video when I have time. Uh, I'm not going to like withhold to a schedule. I'm not going to promise anything from this channel. But I still love the hobby. I just was at Chantilly yesterday. Uh, I will say it's not as, as enjoyable as it used to be. Um, and I will discuss that. I'll do another video and discuss the Chantilly show and some of my thoughts there about the enjoyment of the hobby. I'm going to tell you, Chicago, if it wasn't for the people and going and hanging out, I don't know that I would attend. I, I really don't. I don't. I'm going more just because even though I lived in Indiana for a while, I never went to Chicago. So I'm going more so me and her can kind of see Chicago. And then, uh, you know, there's some folks there that, that have become hobby friends that, that I want to hang out with and stuff for a few days. And um otherwise i wouldn't go um card wise things are a bit out of control um i have really been on the slow of buying and stuff I, I did a video talking about that i don't have that need to have mail days all the time i don't need to buy new cards all the time i bought so much stuff so quickly so many things that i never thought i would own 
in, in such a short period of time during the pandemic and everything when the opportunities were there to unload stuff for high prices to then use that money into buying other cards um i'm just chill appreciating that stuff uh so anyway i hope this wasn't too boring i hope this stood up to jd's challenge um hope this explains a lot of who i am where i came from what cards mean to me you know i i, I collect pokemon not because i am a pokemon fan but because my little brother loved Pokemon and I lost him in 2008. And so as a connection to him, I buy Pokemon cards, you know, I'll buy packs and stuff. And uh, I have a big Pokemon collection. I don't know everything about them, but I know enough to be dangerous and to think that the cards look cool. Um, I like hunting, getting in a rabbit hole and researching and hunting, uh, non-sports cards you know just oddball important people during you know the history of time uh you know some of the the marvel stuff looks cool um i do a lot of different things and uh just like to keep things interesting so um but i really do hope things settle down a bit is the best way to put it uh i hope people get back into the fun of the hobby rather than the dollars of the hobby and uh we'll see how it goes um it has definitely lost a lot of its excitement though i will admit that so anyway that's all i've got for you guys right now um i will do another video about the show and stuff and, and discuss some of that but JD, thank you for the challenge. Thank you for tagging me. Hope this uh, stood up to your challenge. And uh, as always, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. And until the next video, I'm out.